Lord, help us today with your word. Give us utterance. Give us hearing. We honor your word. We believe it. We believe it when you tell us we're the healed. We take it and we act on it and we receive it in Jesus' name. Thank you for utterance and hearing. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I want to I want to uh, read some scriptures today, and uh, because faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So we're going to start with uh, Psalm 145. Thank God for the word. Aren't you thankful that we can hear from God anytime we'll pick this up, put it in our eyes, in our ears? Glory, what an honor. We should be the most, the strongest generation ever, those of us, those generations that have had the word of God available written down in a book and lots of probably 10 copies in every house. Many generations before us did not have that privilege. So we, we should go further, faster than any generation before us. Glory to God. I'm looking at 145 and we're going to read some scriptures this morning. Verse uh, 145 says, the Lord is good to all. Hallelujah. And that's a fact. I will extol thee, my God, O King, and I will wish, I will bless thy name forever and ever. Now we should stay in that mode all the time. You hear bad news, you say, oh, praise God. Bless the name of the Lord. I've been delivered. You hear good news, you say, bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. God has helped me again. Hallelujah. And we live in that state of blessing. So in, in, uh, in uh, let me think, 145 in verse, well, let's just start at 145 Psalm. 145. I will extol thee, O my God, O my King. I will bless thy name for every, forever. <clears throat> every day will I bless thee, and I will praise thy name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatness, his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall praise thy word, uh, shall praise thy works to another and shall declare thy mighty acts. We're expected to pass on what we know about the Lord to our children and they to their children so that our generations have all heard the word of God. Amen. I will speak of the glorious uh, works and mighty power and men shall speak of thy might and terrible or great acts. I will declare thy greatness and they shall abundantly utter uh, the memory of good, great goodness, and shall sing it at, at the righteousness, shall sing in righteousness. We, we, need to, we need to be always thinking about how good God is. When you hear bad news, a scripture ought to just come up in your head that from your spirit to your mind that covers that situation. You say, well, I just don't know the scripture that well. Well, you need to get to know the scripture that well. It can save your life. It can save the life of your family. How you respond in trouble determines your outcome. If people that don't know God and they don't know the Word and they don't know what belongs to them, they're on their own. But we're not those people, are we? We know the Word. We, we've searched the Word. We've put it in our heart. You put it in your eyes and your ears. It gets in your heart. And then it comes up and talks to you. And if, you, if the word's not talking to you, you don't have enough of it. And you never get to the place where you quit storing the word in your eyes and in your ears. Uh, Psalm 145 says that God is good to all. That includes you. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is good to all. He preserves us all. Uh, verse 20 says, he, well, 19 says, he will... Fulfill the desire of them that fear him or honor him. He will also hear their cry and will save them. The Lord preserves all them that love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. 
My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord and let all flesh bless his holy name. How many of you in your life, you can look back at a time where you were in a critical situation and you had to have help at that moment and God saved your life? Look at that. Oh, what a good testimony. I never asked that question before. One time when we were young and, and uh, uh, not very smart, we, uh, we had a car wreck. Little John, who's of course a grown man now, he was a nine month, I believe he was about nine months old. And we were in a, in driving, some car pulled out right in front of us. And we had to, Ken had to slam on the brakes and, and it, it stopped. I mean, it messed the car up, but John was a little baby and he was in a, in those days, you know, you didn't have so many car seats and things. You the babies weren't restrained in cars safely like they are now. And he came through that, Ken, woman pulled out in front of us, Ken slammed on the brakes. John came through that, we had a Buick Riviera with the shift down here and he came through over that shift. And God saved all of our lives, totaled the car. But, but we all walked away from it. John was injured, but the rest of us had you know, we, we were we were okay. Well, what is this? Could you just tell me, please? Did I not pay the rent on that microphone? It's all right, Barry. I know it's a lot of pressure. Barry has a job that nobody else wants. To do. If nobody else wants to do it, they say let Barry do it. <laughs> that right? <Thank> you. <laughs> Psalm 145. God is good to all. Hallelujah. Uh, verse 20 says, The Lord preserves all them that love him. Those that love him are the words, uh, the ones the Bible teaches us that do his word. But all the wicked will he destroy. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord and let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. Verse 8 says, The Lord of God, uh, the Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great mercy. The Lord is good to all, that's you and me both, and his tender mercies are over all his works. Psalm 103 says, Hallelujah, praise God. We're just going to feed ourselves with the word, build our faith, and then we're going to receive our healing. Psalm 103, 1 through 8, says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all thine iniquities, who heals all thy diseases. Now we're settling, we're settling on that today. This is healing service. Who heals all our diseases? Who redeems our life from destruction? Who crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercies? who satisfies thy mouth with good so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He renews our youth. How many of you are glad of that? Yes. Glory to God. So as you grow older and as you mature, don't start talking older and saying, well, you know, I've got the flung jitters or whatever it is. I've got this. I've got that. No, don't start talking. If you have an ache and a pain, well, apply the word to it. If you need to see a doctor, see a doctor, but put your faith in the word. And talk healing. Somebody calls you and you, they say, well, how are you doing? Don't start telling them what you're feeling and how bad it is. Say, well, I believe I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. That's all the information they need anyway. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Ken and I are um, in our 70s, of course, and uh, we are, we've been on the Word for quite a few years, and neither one of us have any prescription drugs. Amen. We are healed. Glory to God. And we're well and this word is the reason why. We found out early in our lifetime that the word works. 
We found it out mostly then through finances because we, were, we had the disease of poverty. <laughs> and we found out that God watched for, you know, here's what the Lord, how he revealed that to me and to Ken. He, he told me this way, uh, that I saw the scripture, Ken's mother had given him a Bible that was New English version. I'd never seen one before. And so I picked it up and it, it, she said in the beginning, he was an only child. And he, she said at the beginning of this uh, Bible she had written, seek thou first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things will be added unto you. Well, I looked that scripture up because I was definitely interested in things. I needed everything. We lived in a rent house that, uh, we didn't have a bed, we had to rent a rollaway bed. We had a coffee table, Ken made in shop, and it was a stunning piece. <laughs> but it held up our black and white TV that had a, it, TV was about this big, and of course black and white was what was out in those days. TV about this big, but the picture was only about this big. <laughs> but we put it on Kenneth's table he made in shop. They were both black, white, black. We set it on that table. We got on our rented rollaway bed. And we began in that spot, I began to, and Ken began to hear and understand that God cares for the birds. This, this Bible, she had written him that, that God cares for, given him that scripture that God knows the birds, cares for the birds. And I thought, well, if God cares for the birds, he cares for me. That brought it, that just put a drop of faith down in me. And we began to believe God. Ken was looking for a job at that time. He was in aviation, and looking for a job. And within just a very short time, he had a, he, he, got a good job and we began to, we got a house that we could actually put something in. I think we might have rented a place first, a furnished place. But anyway, things picked up. Glory to God. And we, we just began our life at that time on the Word of God, knowing we didn't know much, but we knew that He cared for us and He took care of us. And then we began to hear Brother Hagin teach on uh, on living by faith. Now all these years, we're, I think about, what, we're in our 50s on our anniversary. I think it's 54, I don't know for sure. You know, have to write it down. But it's been a long time, it's been a long time. I've been married to one man, it's hard to keep up with, you know, how many years? <laughs> it's not like I changed every few years. No, one man, just one wonderful man all my married life, hallelujah. Glory to God. So early in our marriage, we, we came to the Lord and we learned, then we got on to Brother Hagin. We learned how to live by faith and, and we've had a wonderful and a blessed life together. And we're, we're not through. We're just going to see how many years you can be married in one lifetime. <laughs> and I'll keep you posted. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But I'm definitely staying with him. I'm definitely staying with him. So we're, let's look at healing today. Let's look at some healing scriptures. That's where faith comes from. And uh, <clears throat> Psalm 145, did we read that one already? Yes. Psalm 103, did we read that one? Yes. We're doing good. Deuteronomy 28 tells us that we've been redeemed from the curse of the law. And I won't, I won't go back there, but every, it also tells us in the scripture that every sickness and every disease is under that curse. Every sickness. You, they come up with a new disease, it's under the curse. I love the way the Bible takes care of me all through my life and all through whatever happens out here in this natural world, the scripture still applies and takes care of it. They come up with a new disease, under the curse. If it's under the curse, I've been delivered from it. And you need to get that in your eyes, in your heart, those healing scriptures and keep them there until you know that you've been redeemed from the curse and you stand against it. 
when a, a symptom comes on, uh, toward us, we don't just let it in. We say, no, you don't. Mm -mm. I'm not going there. I rebuke that in Jesus' name. By his stripes, I was healed. If I was healed, I am healed. And that's where, I, that's where Ken and I make our stands. Amen. So we're, we're uh, Ken's not getting close to 80, and I'm just a few years behind him. We don't even have a prescription drug. We don't even need a prescription drug. We've been taking this Bible for so long that we don't have any sickness and disease. And some people, so if I maybe had this thought, well, you just better watch out. You better not talk that way. The devil's going to take your challenge. Don't think he hadn't taken our challenge before. When you get ready to live life and not borrow money, do you think he doesn't take that challenge? When you have uh, symptoms of deficiency, sickness, disease, you think he doesn't take that challenge? But I'm telling you, Jesus is already whipped him. He has been defeated. Everything the devil tells you to do is a lie because he doesn't have any power left. But if he can make you think he does, if he make you think he can do this or that to you, then you give him a place. But God doesn't give him any place. He's a defeated foe. Glory to God. And Jesus is King and Lord of all. If you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, you are really wasting a lot of time because that's what makes life doable, bearable. It's what makes life uh, challenging to overcome everything, whatever comes at you, the challenge, whatever challenge it is, that word overcomes it in Jesus' name. And I don't think you have to be old and grouchy just because you're 70, 80, 90, or 100 years old. Do you? Not when you've got the Bible. But how we treat the Word of God, you and I treat the Word of God, and how we obey it, and how we follow what it says determines our outcome. You know, there's a lot of people that don't believe in healing. They don't believe in healing. Their, t their church, I, actually I was raised in this church, their church uh, says healing's passed away. Well, if you're going to get on that, healing's passed away. But if you're going to get on the scripture that says he bore our sicknesses and carried our diseases, you're going to get on the Bible way, then it's still available to you. Isn't that right? But you have to know what it says, and that's why these believers' conventions are, are so important. I, I need to hear it over and over and over again. You hear new things coming from different people, not new to the Word, but new to us, or either said in a different way that it makes it come through so that you get it. So our healing school today, in Psalm 145, it says God is good to all. That means me. Psalm 103 says that he has healed our sicknesses and carried our diseases, and by his stripes we were healed. Now that's me. I were healed. It's already been done. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Deuteronomy 28 tells us that we've been redeemed from the curse of the law and every sickness and every disease, it says, is under that curse. So if they come up with something new, new disease, you've already been delivered from it. Now I think that's good planning, don't you? I think God did some good planning for us. Glory to God. Galatians 3 says, 13 says, every sickness and every disease is under that curse. Deuteronomy 28 will tell us that uh, we've been redeemed. Uh, Galatians 3 says we've been redeemed. Deuteronomy 28 lists every sickness and every disease under that curse. Well, everything they come up with, we've already been delivered from it. Glory. But how, how come so many people are sick? Because they're not in the Word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Faith doesn't come by cancer or sickness or pneumonia or bad things. Faith comes from truth. And if you don't find out the truth, you're not going to have faith. But if you'll do what? Obviously, the, I'm talking to the choir here, but still it's good to remind ourselves of it. 
you might have drugged some unbelieving person in here with you. So, what do we do? We walk by faith and not by sight. How do we do that? By staying in the Word of God. You know, there's people, just millions, I'd say millions of people in this world cannot imagine taking your vacation and going to church for a week. That, that's just something that's beyond the pale for them. But if they knew what we knew, we couldn't get them all in this building. Amen. Glory to God. I like God's way. Every sickness, every disease, it says in Deuteronomy 28, is under the curse. Now, uh, Psalm 91 is a long life scripture. Let's look at that. I'm all into long life as I approach my latter years. I've been there, though, for a long time for long life. Glory to God. Who doesn't want long life? But you don't want to be sick. You want to be healed. So in Psalm 91, which everybody knows by heart, is a marvelous scripture. Uh, he that dwelleth, and here's the, the it, it holds the key to staying well and staying blessed and staying in the blessing instead of the curse. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say, now your words, you know your words. If you know anything about faith, you get what you say. You say it. That's your faith talking. Psalm 91 agrees with that. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. This is a decision that we make. I say right. I say what the word says. I say what I want to come to pass. And I trust in God. How do I trust in God? By his word. What his word says, I believe it, I take it. That's faith. Faith's not hard. You can do this. And we can all increase our faith. How? More word, more saying. Surely, in him will I trust. Surely, he shall del deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome or deadly, that means deadly, from the deadly pestilence. So, you know, we hear today in, in our generation, we hear about biological warfare. We hear about diseases that we've never heard about before. Whatever comes out, biological warfare, whatever, we've been delivered from it if we're in Christ Jesus. And I am in Christ Jesus. How many of you are in Christ Jesus? You say, well, I don't know if I am or not. Well, here's how you do it. You say, Jesus. Say it, everybody. Jesus. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Say what I said. Take my life and do something with it. Glory to God. I receive it. I'm telling you, he can do it. He can take you from where you've been raised. You think, well, I wasn't raised. I didn't have any advantages of anything about God where I've been raised. And, and, you know, I'm just behind. Well, he can take you from where you are to where he wants you to be if you'll go with him in the Word and believe what it says. Glory to God. I, I personally was raised in a church famous for believing nothing. I won't tell you what church, but... But you know what? It didn't seem to get into me. I didn't, I didn't hardly catch on to there. I was young, and, and I wasn't too interested. You know what I mean? So it was fortunate that it didn't get in there. But you can go now... That was many years ago. Now there's good churches in just about every city or town in this country. Isn't that awesome? They're good word churches, good churches that preach of the word. Hallelujah. So we don't have any excuses in our generation. He shall cover thee when you stay in the Psalm 91 uh, mode. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust his truth shall be a shield and buckler. His, the word to us in this life, in this earth, is a shield and a buckler. It's a guard. It's a protection. But if you don't know what it says, you left your shield at home. Thou shalt not be afraid. So we're not to be free, fearful. We don't take fear. We're not afraid. Why are we not afraid? Because we're in faith. Faith believes God. Faith and fear are opposite. If you're in fear, you need to make changes. You need to get busy. 
They shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for pestilence that walks, or disease that walks in darkness and destruction that wastes at noonday. Here's how bad it can get. A thousand shall fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Here's 11,000 people dropping around, all around you. There you are in the middle and you're not touched. That's how powerful God's word is and his protection is. But you know what will, will rob you of that scripture right there? Fear. You can't have fear and faith at the same time. If you have a problem with fear, you need to cast it out. You need to get rid of it. Every time a fear thought comes up to you, you just say, I'm not taking that in Jesus' name. I've been delivered and I'm free and I'm blessed. What's blessed can't be cursed. Amen? So a thousand can get so bad, a thousand on one side, uh, 10,000 on the other. Only with your eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked. Didn't say it wouldn't be around you. Didn't say you wouldn't see it. But you'd just see it. You don't have to participate. Amen? Glory to God. Ken and I, one day were in the airplane and we were going on a trip somewhere. And up above us, I don't know how far it would have been, but not we weren't right in it, but it was right where we could see it. There was a cloud and a tornado started coming down out of that cloud. Well, we saw it. We saw that tornado coming down. It was about to hit somewhere, probably 100 miles from where we were. It, wherever, I don't know. It was, we could see it, but we weren't in it. And we said, you get back up there in the name of Jesus. And that sucker went, ch -ch -ch -ch, and back up it went. Not to be seen by us again. Hallelujah. You can talk to things. You can talk to storms. You can speak at things that are trying to take your life. You can talk to disease in Jesus' name. Just like we spoke to that tornado. You can talk to sickness and disease and say, you're not coming on me. Or if something's on you, you just say, you know, I cast you out. I'll not have you. I'll not allow you in my body and call it by its name and say, you're under the curse. And Jesus, the word says, I've been redeemed from the curse of the law. Amen. Psalm 145 says, the Lord is good to all. So that covers all of us. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The Lord is good to all and his mercy endures forever. You can't wear him out. You can be the worst character in the whole world. But if you'll repent and come back to him, just say, Lord, have mercy on me. I, I make you Lord of my life. I receive you as my Lord. All that old bad stuff will be washed off of you, washed away, and you become what this wonderful thing called a new creature in Christ. What is a new creature? A new creature is a new creation. It's a, it's a person that's never been before. When we got born again, we changed. We did, we're not the same old, I'm not that same old girl, you're not that same old guy. You were changed to a new creature in Christ Jesus. Every bad thing in your life is gone. It's, you might have the memory of it, but don't dwell on it. You've been delivered from it. It's gone and you've been born over again. Think of how many people in this world would like to know that they could start over again. Not just start over, but be born over. Glory to God. So if you're in that condition today, I'm going to tell you how to do it. You just say, Jesus, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Glory to God. I said to him, take my life and do something with it. At that time, if there's anything I wouldn't have wanted to be, it would be a preacher's wife. <laughs> but then I became a new creature. And then I met another new creature. And he asked me on the first date. Well, he wasn't quite a new creature there, but and I wasn't either actually at that time probably. But he, he asked me to marry him on the first date. So I held out for about three minutes. And I said, okay. <laughs> I've told you all this story before, but it's a hoot. I went in and I thought, I, I, I don't even know him. Why did I say that? Oh, well, I'll get out of it later. Well, that's been 50, 50 plus years now. 
But I don't want out of it. Hallelujah. Ken and I have had a marvelous time together serving the Lord. And that's what's available for everybody. Just put him at the top and it'll come to pass. Psalm 103, every si and uh, Galatians says, Every sickness is under the curse in Deuteronomy 28:61. In Psalm 91, uh, we talked about abiding. This, this, uh, this person abides under the shadow of the Almighty. That great protection that's in Psalm 91 has a, has a, you know, there's something necessary to have that great protection. You've got to be an abider. What is an abider? Well, that's one that lives in the Lord, lives with the Lord, obeys the word. He said, if my, word, if you abide in, if my words abide in you and you abide in me, ask what you will and it will be done for you. Boy, that cuts it short, doesn't it? You abide in me, you got it made. What is abiding? Abiding is obeying, doing what he says. And there's no limit then to the blessing that can come in your life. And there might be somebody here that, you know, your friend drug you, your, your relative drug you here, and you thought, I don't know what I'm doing in this place. Well, it, you got a chance to start all over in life if you never made Jesus the Lord of your life. If you've made him the Lord and you got away from it, then repent and go back. Hallelujah. Glory to God. How many of you have been born again? Look at that. Isn't that great? I won't ask for those that haven't, but that's who I'm talking to. Glory to God. Every sickness under the curse, every sin, uh, the power of sin broken over our lives. That new creature that you are in Christ Jesus got authority. We've got authority. We have authority, and we have to take it. Just because we have it doesn't mean that when sickness comes, we don't get sick. But because we take that authority and we rebuke it in the name of Jesus, we say, no, no, and we go to the healing scripture that he bore our sickness, carried our diseases, by his stripes I was healed. When we act on the word of God, it takes effect in our lives. You say, well, I just got started at this, and uh, I, I don't know much about the Bible. Well, start finding you, get you a list of healing scriptures. Uh, if you don't know how to do it, find somebody's book that's got it written in there. L list of healing scriptures. Well, I don't know. I'm not sick, but I'm, I'm broke. Well, find you the prosperity scriptures and take hold of those prosperity scriptures. That's what we did. We were in debt. We didn't have anything. It was a sad time. We didn't know we were, you know, we didn't know how broke we were. When I look back, we should have been sadder than we were. <laughs> but we didn't know how broke we were. But we, we uh, Ken's mother, uh, let's see, what she, she got, she helped me, she gave me some old furniture for our little house in Tulsa. And, and then I, I bought a table and we put it together and I painted it up and made us a little dining table and, that's, what, that's the way we started. You know why we didn't stay there? Because at that same time, we got on the Word of God. We were born again, got on the Word. Brother Hagen, when we lived in uh, Tulsa, he was having seminars 10 days every quarter, I believe, if I remember right. <clears throat> and we, we, at, now we're born again. Now we, know what, we already know the Word's our answer. So we get over there in those meetings twice a day, every day. We don't miss. We get the Word of God. And we've stayed that way. We have to have God's Word to keep our faith sharp and strong. And you do too. You say, well, I, I'm working three jobs. I'm just so busy. I just don't have time. Well, if you would get in the Word, you could probably get by on one job. One good job instead of three puny jobs. See, that's called the blessing. Say the blessing. The blessing comes on us when we come in. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Okay, uh, let's see. The Psalm 91, the key to long life is abiding in him. With long life, that scripture says, will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. You make God your refuge. You make the Lord Jesus Christ your refuge. And you can be satisfied and have long life. That's where we all ought to be. Long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Prosperous and blessed. Hallelujah. Matthew 15, did I read that yet? Okay, y'all help me today. 
so I don't get too carried away. Let's see, Matthew 15, 30. Oh, this is the, let's look at, let's see, 15, I'm looking for the right spot to start here. This was in Jesus' ministry, and he said, And great multitudes came unto him, having with them those that were lame, blind, dumb, maimed, and many others, and cast them down at Jesus' feet. Can you get a picture of that? Here they are bringing all their people, all their old people, all their young people that sick or impaired or anyway, and they just brought them to him and cast him down at his feet. And what did he do? He healed them. Glory to God. All kind of people live in all kind of ways. And when they got to Jesus' feet, he had mercy on them. Insomuch that the multitude wondered when they saw the dumb to speak, the maimed to be whole, the lame to walk, the blind to see. And they glorified the God of Israel. Glory to God. God could heal everyone and will if we'll accept it this morning in this place in just one whoosh, swift moment. Never to have that sickness or disease again. Glory to God. Hallelujah. If what? If we release our faith. If we'll allow faith to come into this, into this auditorium. We've had a lot of healing services in here. We've been having meetings here for a long time. And uh, we are preaching you the word. We're telling you what, what's available. All you got to do is just take it, receive it, and say, that's mine. I'll take it. I'll take it. By his stripes, I was healed. Say that. By his stripes, I was healed. If I was healed, I am healed. And I take it today. I take healing from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. I am, healed. I am healed. Jesus is my healer. Jesus. Glory to God. Now that's what you do. You, you take the word like that at home when any symptom comes, act on it. Say, no, you're not coming on me. No, you're not coming on my child. No, I won't have you. You start laying, if, you're, if you have children, you're supposed to pray over them, lay hands on them and keep them healed. That's our job as mothers and daddies. So the, the key to long life is abiding in him in Psalm 91. We abide in the shadow of his might. We abide in what he says. We obey what he says. And that shuts the door to the devil. Glory to God. Uh, Hebrews 13, 8 says, uh, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So what he did... In Jerusalem or anywhere else, he's just the same today. He's moved by faith today. When that woman with the issue of blood came, she'd been to many doctors, but not, none of them had helped her. But when she said this, she said it, see, here's her mouth going, if I just touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. Now there were people thronging Jesus, people on every side. But somehow she got out of her house, which was not legal for her to do with an issue of blood. But she got to where he was and she touched his garment in faith. What did she do? She took it. She took her healing. She said it. She got there. She touched it. And she received it. Glory to God. If I just touch, he won't even have, in other words, he won't even have to talk to me. He won't even have to know I'm there because she shouldn't have been there out, according to their law with an issue of blood. He won't even know that I'm there. I'll just get there. I'll just get through that place. And if I can just touch his garment, I shall be made whole. Glory to God. And she got there. She got through the crowd. She got to him. She touched him. 
that healing power went into her and she felt in her body that she was healed. And Jesus said, who touched me? He knew that healing power had flown out of, flowed out of him. Glory to God. Now he's willing to heal. He's all, he is the healer. Jesus is the healer. Uh, all that woman had to do that day was just do it in faith. Touch him in faith. Just believe, believe what she'd heard or seen. Or, and she got down there. She said it. She said it. She said it. How many of you have come today to receive healing? How many of you have been saying... I'm, I'm healed today. I'm receiving my healing today. See, we're faith people. We know what to do. Glory to God. I'm receiving my healing today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So he bore our sicknesses and carried our diseases. By his stripes, we were healed. Hallelujah. Uh, the spirit of faith receives, it takes, and it happens. Uh, Charles Cap says this, about faith. If you're applying the principle, it is working. If you're applying the principle, it is working. Uh, and that I, I believe that. The faith is the title deed. That's a Hebrews 11.1. 1. And then uh, in Psalm 19.7 in the Amplified, it says, The law of the Lord is perfect, restoring the whole person. If you've got things missing, if you've got parts missing, if you've got a, a, been diagnosed with a bad heart or a bad liver or any other thing, this is a scripture for you to take, a scripture. The law of the Lord is perfect. The word of God is perfect. Restoring the whole person. Hallelujah. That's us. We should be whole persons. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. Glory to God. Psalm 145 says, The Lord is good to all. That's you and me. Psalm, 140, uh, Psalm 103 says, Every sickness and every disease, glory to God, hallelujah, has been taken care of. Every, Deuteronomy 28, 61 says, Do, uh, Every sickness is under the curse. Galatians 3 says, We've been redeemed from the curse. So, if you've got some disease that nobody else has ever had in the whole world and you never even heard of it, but now you, you've been diagnosed with it, it's under there. It's under the curse. Glory to God. Every bad thing is under the curse. Your sadness is under the curse. Your sickness is under the curse. Poverty is under the curse. The Lord intends for us to be blessed and well and strong and whole. We say, well, I, I just have never been able to get a good job. I've, I've never been able to increase. Here's the answer right here. Get on the Word of God. Begin to say the Scriptures about prosperity. Begin to say the Scriptures about healing. Begin to say the Scriptures about peace or whatever else it is you need. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Uh, the... Uh, uh, Deuteronomy, every curse, every sickness under the curse. We've been redeemed from the curse. Psalm 91 tells us about long life. Glory to God. We can have long life. 1 Thessalonians 5, 14. Let's look at that scripture. Did we already read that? Okay, y'all got to help me keep up. 1 Thessalonians Five, thirteen. Well, this is all pretty good stuff right here. Let's look at verse. Let's just start with verse eight and we'll read some scriptures in the King James. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love. Now that's a revelation right there. Faith and love. Because the Bible says faith works by love, so you have to have faith and love. And for a helmet, the hope of salvation. The expectation, in other words. Put on faith and love. We're walking in faith. We're walking in love. And we have the uh, hope, the expectations. I like that better. The expectation of salvation. Deliverance. Glory to God. 
For healing is part of our salvation. That's part of what belongs to us now. For God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation. Who died, uh, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Glory to God. You know what? We don't have anything to fear in death. We're not ready to go until we lived out our full days, full number of our days. But we're with him, live or die. Isn't that good? And you know, a lot of people are threatened by the fear of death and Satan tries to get people afraid of death so that they can't be in fear and faith at the same time. And then that gives him place, gives Satan a way in. So if you have fear, if you have fear of anything, don't, don't put up with it. Cast it out. Say, no, you're not coming on me. Faith is under the curse. Faith is Satan's tool to get a way into our lives. And we have to say, no, you're not coming in here. You take authority over things, over storms and tornadoes and anything else. Ken and I were, I think I may have said this sometime this week, but we were going down the road one day many years ago and, uh, on the freeway. There was a woman in front of us, and she had little kids in the car, and I forget now what happened to it, but we were behind her, and she hit something, and it went up. The car went, say, this is the car. She hit something, it rolled the car up like that. Now, Ken and I were right behind her, and we said, you get back down there in the name of Jesus, and that car went. (laughs) See, it's important that we're ready to respond to help people. Now that woman never, she had little kids in the car. She never knew that God's, well, he could have told her, but she may have never known that God saved her life that day and that of her children because somebody responded in faith. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we have to stay on the, we have to stay on the cutting edge of the word in faith. If we don't participate in the word on a regular basis, every day, preferably, then, then we get rusty and dull and we don't respond like we should. And we want to feed on it. We want to say it. I'm telling you, if this is new to you, you need to spend a great deal of time just learning how to live by faith. Once you learn how to live by faith, it becomes a natural way for you to live. But if you don't find out how, it's always a struggle. So... Uh, the very God of peace sanctify, your, by, sanctify you or separate you wholly. Your whole spirit and soul be preserved. Your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord. Faithful is he that calls you who also will do it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's how we live in divine health. God's got a divine health plan, and it's called the Word of God. Thank you, Jesus. Let me see what I've got here. uh, The uh, first Thessalonians said, well, that's what I just read. May your spirit, soul, and body be preserved and sound and complete and found blameless at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the Amplified Version. Faithful is he who is calling you to himself and utterly trustworthy and he will also do it. Do what? He'll keep you safe. He'll take care of you. He'll keep you healed if you'll give him place. He will fulfill his call by hallowing and keeping you. Glory to God. 1 Thessalonians 5, 23 and 24 in the Amplified. There's a scripture that says he'll keep your bones. People get diagnosed with bone trouble. You know, your bones are disintegrating or not what they should be. Psalm 34, 19 through 20. That's your scripture about bones. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So what you need is in the Word of God. You need to know where it is. You need to know where to go at the first sign of trouble. That's why it's important for you to really know the Word. You need to study, show yourself approved. You need to feed on the Word of God. You need to know that God is good to all, like Psalm 145 says, that He bore our sicknesses and carried our diseases, that every sickness is under the curse. That's Deuteronomy 28, 61. 
You need to know that his will is for us to have long life, be satisfied with long life. Hallelujah, Psalm 91. We ought to be satisfied. We ought to be satisfied all during our lifetime. And then we ought to live long and strong and be satisfied. When we leave the earth, which is a great thing, if you've done it right, you know, and you go to the right place, you need to go up, not down. <laughs> but we live satisfied all those years. And God blesses us, and He takes care of us, and He preserves us, and He helps us to keep a walking and keep moving, keep the bones strong, keep ourselves healed. He heals us by the Word of God. And then one day, when we finished our course, we get to graduate. Glory to God. We may all graduate together, or some of us may graduate together, depending on where you are in life. What is the most important thing you can do in this life? First is to make Jesus the Lord of your life. If you've never been done that, then you've never been born again. That's how you get born again. How come you have to do that? Why can't you go to Buddha and get born again? <laughs> Buddha did not pay the price for your sins and your sicknesses. Jesus took the whole curse for us on himself. Buddha never did that for you. I don't know what Buddha does. All I, I think about is a big belly and smoke, but I don't know much about it. But I know about Jesus. I know what he did. I know what he still does today. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I get excited because I really believe this stuff. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God's good to all. Every sickness is under the curse. Psalm 91 says we get long life when we, when we abide in Him. We live till we're satisfied. Uh, Proverbs 17, 20. Did I read Isaiah 53 yet? Isaiah 53, He bore our sicknesses and carried our diseases, and by His stripes we were healed. Hallelujah. Uh, Proverbs 17, 22 in the Amplified talks about a merry heart. We should not be sad. Um, let me find my spot again here. 17, 22, Proverbs. If you're, if you're sad and gloomy in your life, you're not doing it right. Here's what we need to do. Is have a merry heart. A happy heart. A satisfied heart. Listen to this scripture in the Amplified. This is about healing too. A happy heart is, a, is good medicine. Glory to God. Now y'all get hold of this one. This is Proverbs 17.22. A happy heart is good medicine. Well, that would make me to say that a sad heart is not good medicine. Medicine. A sad heart is down. You know, a happy heart's up. You know they're happy, they're up, they're feeling good about things, going about their business just cheerful and everything. Well, the devil has a hard time with a happy heart because he can't get in there. But think about a sad heart. What's a sad heart? Well, we're depressed. We're down. We, uh, it, this is what, what it says in the Amplified is a broken spirit. But a broken spirit dries up the bones. So whether you have a happy heart or a broken spirit is up to you. People, some people get depressed when there's really nothing to be depressed over. Some people get depressed when there is something to be depressed over. But you and I, we're going to keep a happy heart regardless of the circumstances because we know we can have it. There it is right there. A happy heart is good medicine. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Well, the opposite of that would be sadness would be a weakness. Amen? You'd be weak. When you're sad, you just don't have any fight about you. You're just sad. You just, you know, you just let 
things happen and you don't do this, you don't clean your house or make your bed or anything like that. Why? Because I'm unhappy. I'm not happy. I'm not happy. Well, get up and get on the ball and get happy. Get in the Word of God. Go to a church where they preach faith to you, preach you something you can live on it. And, and take authority. Get in the Bible yourself. Amen? Glory to God. Hallelujah. And every day have Word, the Word of God going in you. The Scripture says Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So it, he, he's, he's ready for us. All we have to do is give Him place. But He's not like the devil. He won't force Himself in. You have to invite Him in. How would you get born again? You answered a what invitation? Somebody probably gave you an invitation or you just went on your own, but you answered his invitation to be born again. And what happened to you when you were born again? You became a new creation, a new creature in Christ Jesus. Old things passed away. All things became new. You had an opportunity to start over again. Now, you may have messed it up, but when you mess up, what do you do? You repent. And you get right back on that path. You get right back in there. What you're doing here this week, get in the Word of God. Get in a good church. Don't let the devil talk you out of your salvation. I'm in. Glory to God. Uh, a happy heart is a good medicine. A happy heart. Strife, Proverbs 17, 19. Did I read that about strife? That's just the opposite. Uh... It's just, strife is, a, is something that, a tool of the devil. It's to bring discord, disharmony, do away with your faith, wipe your faith out because maybe you're in unforgiveness. Maybe somebody did you wrong and now instead of walking in love, you're thinking about retaliation. What am I going to do to get even? But don't try to get even. Try to get free. Glory to God. Just say, here's how you get free if somebody's done you wrong. You say, Lord, I forgive them in the name of Jesus because I, I know that's what I'm supposed to do. I forgive and I'm forgiven. And what happened when you did that? You went free. What happened to them? We don't know what happened to them. They're not our problem. We're our problem. We say we repent and we ask forgiveness for strife and I won't get in that anymore. I forgive that person for that thing. And what happened? You just... Shut the door on it. You went free. Now the Word can work in your life better. Your faith can work better. Faith works by love. What does love do? Love bears up under anything and everything that comes. Is ever ready to believe the best of every person. Its hopes are fadeless. Love just doesn't quit. Hallelujah. Amen? So if you've got things that are a problem, and they might have really done you wrong, but now they're still doing you wrong because you're letting them, so you forgive. Glory to God. So uh, we want to be on the happy heart side. The joy of the Lord. That's the fruit of the Spirit. Love, peace, love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. All of those things, all those wonderful attributes are born into our new spirit. That's our nature now that we're born again. Now, we may not be flowing with our nature. We may be doing something else, but that's what's in there. And if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, this new creature that you will become will have all those assets inside to be walked in, lived in. How many of you know it's, you'd be more happy if you walked in joy than if you walked in unforgiveness? And our... Our soul, our mind, our will, and our emotions, that's up to us to see to that we do it right. That's where love is. That's where discord is. That's where strife is in your emotions. And we want to stay on the love side of everything. Amen? So if somebody's done you wrong, if you can make it right, make it right. If you can't, either way, forgive them. Amen? And you go free. Well, what happens to them? Well, we don't know what happened to them. They're not our problem. We're our responsibility. Amen? So we forgive 
if we have anything against anybody and we go free. The joy of the Lord once again can rise up in us and that's our strength. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We believe we receive our, our wholeness, our healing, our health. Uh, the the uh, Psalm 103, we talked about that. We talked about Psalm 91. Proverbs 3 talks about the length of our days. Glory to God. Today, we read, the, we read about Psalm 145 says God's good to all. Psalm 103, we read that scripture. Every sickness, Galatians, every sickness and every disease, Deuteronomy says, is under that curse. That's in Deuteronomy 28. Psalm 91, the key to long life. Oh, that's a great scripture. Live long, be satisfied. Dwell in the secret place of the Most High, whose power no foe can withstand. Glory to God. That's us, church. You say, yeah, but yeah, I know that. I know I'm supposed to forgive, but I just don't think I can. You can. It's a decision of your will to forgive. Now, when you forgive, you go free. Well, what about them? Well, we forgive them. We pray for those that use and persecute us, and we believe that they'll go free, but really they're not our responsibility if we've done our part. We believe we receive, we've forgiven, and we pray for them. And what happens? We don't have to think about it anymore. Yeah, but they did me wrong. Well, they're still doing you wrong because you're letting them do you wrong by dwelling on it. It's a wonderful thing that we can walk in love. And that's our, if we're born again, that is our spirit. That's our natural way of life. We have to uh, let other things in before we don't walk in love. If you know the word. Now, if you don't know the word, you're not going to know how to walk in love. You don't, you'll be touchy, fretful, and resentful. You can get born again and never grow again. Just stay stupid. <laughs> because if you don't go and get food, you're not going to be grown. If you don't learn, you're not going to grow. This is how we get by on the Word of God. And if we don't partake of the Word on a regular basis, we'll let things slip even though we are born again and we do know some word. So what do we do? We live. Uh, we live circumspectly is the Bible word. Circumspectly, watchfully. We watch over ourselves. We watch over our response to things. We, we, uh, we, if somebody does aggravate us or do us wrong, what can we do about it? Well, we can say, Lord, I forgive them of that and I go free. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Proverbs talks about a happy heart. Proverbs uh, 17, 20. Did we read that one? I got it right here. I guess I did. 17, 22. Oh, 17, 22. I was just looking here at 18, 22. He who finds a a true wife finds a good thing <laughs> and obtains favor of the Lord. A good wife is a good thing because I'm telling you, a wife that's not good, she can mess you up. <laughs> so maybe you're not a good husband. Maybe you're not a good wife, but you better get that way if you want to live in life and peace. Amen? That's where he, ha ha happiness, a happy heart, does good like a medicine. But strife is just the opposite. It lets in all the bad things, all the trouble, everything. It just puts your barrier down on the ground to where you are subject to whatever comes along. Proverbs 4.20 talks about, of course, staying healed on the Word of God. We're going to pray the prayer of faith. The woman with the issue of blood, she had it right. She, she knew what she was doing. She said, if I just touch his garment, I'll be whole. She got to where the garment was. She touched it, and immediately her body was made whole. Glory to God. She was healed. She was whole. 
She said it. She Amplified says, I think, she kept saying, if I just touch the hem of his garment, I shall be healed. We could say this morning, it, when we pray the prayer of faith for healing, I will be healed. I will be healed this morning as the prayer of faith is coming forth. I'll release my faith. Say, I'll release my faith. And I shall be made whole. In Jesus' name, to the glory of God the Father. Hallelujah. Praise God. We take it, Lord. We take it. We take our healing. Um, faith, here's a, a few notes here. Faith hears, receives, and takes. That's what that word means. Believe you receive when you pray is take. Take it. Acts and talks and speaks. Uh, love is healthier. Love is strife-free. Forgiveness and uh, acts of love and in peace. He thinks, forgiveness thinks in love and peace. And then I've got this in highlights. Old age, not for a long time. Did y'all get that? Old age, not for a long time. Hallelujah. Psalm 92, 15 through, uh, 12 through 15 says, you, still, you will still flourish in old age. But then I say it's not for a long time. We're going to stay healthy and strong and all of that all the days of our lives. Amen. I've got still underlined. That's Psalm 92, 12 through 15. And then it talks about living memorials. We're living memorials to the fact that Jesus is Lord and that he cares, and that he loves, and that he makes you whole and well. When you go home from this meeting, and you've he you're healed of whatever you had before, and you're, you know, they expect you to come limping in, to come dragging in, and you jump in there, and here you are, and you're all up. They're going to think, what, what happened to her? What happened to, what, 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 what happened to you? You say, well, I, I got healed or I got saved, or I received the Holy Spirit. That's a memorial. They won't forget that. And if they watch you and you still keep it up, they'll be saying, I want to get saved. I want to receive the Holy Spirit. I want to prosper. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So he bore our sicknesses, carried our diseases. By his stripes we were healed. And we're going to pray this morning. We're going to, we're going to receive every sickness and every disease that, that is under the curse, we're going to receive healing for everyone. Hallelujah. Is, is Ken here, David? Is he here? Glory to God. I just about forgot about you. There you are. <laughs> help us, help us. Amen. Doesn't he look pretty in his blue jacket? <clears throat> I've been married to this same fella. For a long time. May, may I? And I'm going to stay with him. What? Uh, David, would you hand me my Bible, please? Let's go back to the 91st Psalm. And we'll see something here. Um, I noticed this years ago. And I received my healing when the Lord gave me revelation of this. And you might want to make a note of this. There are three separate people in the 91st Psalm. It starts off that first verse, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That's the Father speaking. Hmm. The next verse is Jesus. The next verse is me. And this is how I get in the secret place. I will say of the Lord, he's my refuge, my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. Praise God. 
Then now this is Jesus, commander in chief of the body of Christ in the third verse, surely he, the father. And and I always wondered why that's worded so strange there. Hmm. And it's translated right. I, he that dwelleth, I will say, he will deliver. I mean, it, it, yeah. but when you realize there are three different people speaking here, the Father spoke. Now, I have made my, conf- my confession and stepped, stepped over in the secret place of the Most High. Now, Jesus talking to me. Surely he, the Father, will deliver you, Kenneth, from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He, the Father, shall cover you, Kenneth, with his feathers, and under his wings shall you trust. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand shall fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come nigh you. Only with your eyes like a bad movie shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked. (laughs) That wasn't in there, but I put it in there. I wrote it in there. I wrote it in my Bible, so it is written. (laughs) Only with an eye. Because, now look at this. This is Jesus talking to me. Because you, Kenneth, have made the Lord, which is my refuge. Jesus said, he's my refuge. That's Jesus talking. He, you have made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, your habitation. There shall no evil fall you, neither shall any plague come nigh your dwelling. Man, when I saw that, and I, I, it suddenly put me in that place of, uh, of divine protection and authority, and my, my faith came up to that place, I'm not having sickness, disease in this house anymore. I'm not having this. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. They shall bear you up in their hands lest you dash your foot against a stone. I want you to notice something here. And that we're going to, this is one of the things we're going to activate. Those angels are the ones that they say, <laughs> thank you, Lord. Can I say that, Lord? He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings shall you trust. These angels are in charge of all of this. They are in charge of keeping you uh, safe from terror. They're in charge taking care of you against the arrow, the missiles that, and, and, and so forth, the pestilence that walks in darkness and a thousand fall at one side, 10,000 other side. And there, those angels involved in all of this. There is feathers. And this room is full of them right now. Wherever you're watching on television, where, where, the, we know there's at least one there because it's yours. Amen. 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 That's your angel assigned to you. So watch what you say. Don't provoke your angel. Hallelujah. Now, verse 14, the father speaks up because now this is, this is so, this is so precious. Notice this. The father is speaking to Jesus. The father is speaking to Jesus about you and me. Because he has set his love upon me. Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he's known my name. He's activated his covenant with me. 
He'll call on me and I'll answer him. I'll be with him in trouble. I'll deliver and honor him with long life. Will I satisfy him and show him my salvation? Are you satisfied? Not yet. Me either. Me? Not yet. <laughs> no, not yet. Now, every time you see a verse like that, God doesn't just throw that out there for you to make up your mind what long life is. Well, anytime you go through the scripture, you find a, a, a reference to long life. What's it based on? Genesis 6, 3. The Lord said in Genesis 6, 3, the days of man shall be 120 years. Now that's it. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, let's go over to Exodus. Well, if you're not satisfied, I think you could live on a few more years. Well, yeah, that's, the, that's, not, the, that's not the limit. Yeah. It is the, it, well, and, the, and if you read it in, in the New Living Translation, it said it's the normal. The norm, 120. See, everybody's thought 70 or 80 yeah. is the normal. No, that came as a curse. That was under the curse. They were limited to 70 or 80 because of the Well, curse. because of their disobedience out yeah. there in that desert. Then God told them, he said, if you're over 20, you're going to die. I don't care what kind of condition you're in. So, but he's saying normal life is 120. So, I believe it. So that's what that's, those scriptures are based on. Praise now, God. Exodus 23 And look at the 25th verse. And you shall serve the Lord your God, and he will bless your bread and water, and I will take sickness from the midst of you. Well, now, what, hey, there's something going on here. There's a he and there's an I. So back up. Verse 20. I send an angel before you to keep you in the way to bring you into the place where I have prepared Beware of him, obey his voice, provoke him not. Now the 25th verse, and you shall serve the Lord your God and your angel will bless your bread and water and I, God, will take sickness from the midst of you. Does that excite you or what? <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, God said, I will take sickness from the midst yes, he of said you. It. He said I will take sickness yes. from the midst Glory of you. Glory to God. No sickness in the midst of me. Now, let's go to, uh, go to uh, Isaiah 53. Hallelujah. Verse 4 Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Now, if you, uh, Matthew 8, 17, translate that, quoting Isaiah, he has borne our sicknesses and carried our diseases. So, and the Hebrew words translated grief and sorrow. Now, now don't just do away with the words grief and sorrow. He bore our griefs. We're a people that have hope. We should, the scripture says, sorrow not. He bore our sorrows. He bore our griefs. But in those words, he bore our griefs, our sorrows, our sickness, our disease, yes, our amen. weakness, and our pain. Praise God. Glory Hallelujah. God. And, and when you, when you all, also in that word translated sorrow, in that word is the curse of toil. Toil. Isn't that marvelous? See, see, Jesus bore that. We work, but we don't work for a living. We give for a living and we work on assignment. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I can prove it by the word. Let him that stole steal no more. Let him work with his hands that which is good in order that he may have to give to him that needs. Not in order that he may buy food in order that he may have give. You working for seed, brother. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. All of that is in that word sorrow. Praise God. That's big stuff. That's big. Amen. All right. Get on your feet. 
Surely he hath borne our griefs, carried our sorrows, sickness, diseases, weaknesses, and pains. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. He was wounded. Now, now, let, let me help you with something here. The word translated wounded is actually tormented. That means he bore every tormenting fear that exists. He bore it. Shame is a tormentor. He bore that. Now, let let me continue to, to, to help you with here. He was tormented for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes, or the same word, bruise and stripes. That's exactly the same Hebrew word. The English translator just switched them back and forth. He was bruised for our iniquity, and with those bruises, we are, bring it over like the apostle Peter did, we were here. We were, we are, and will continue to be. We were, we are, and will continue to be healed. Now look at verse 10. It pleased the Lord to bruise, there it is again. It pleased the Lord to bruise him. Why? So you get your healing. So you be well. Praise God. Now, quit trying. (laughs) Quit trying to get healed. You don't make it happen. You let it happen. It's already, this has already been done. These are not promises. These are Bible facts. We receive it, Lord. Amen. Thank you. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Good. You got any more here? Are you ready to charge this thing? Charge it. Huh? You ready to get? (laughs) I'm ready. Tracy, come up here and stand with me. George, come up here and stand with me, please. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Every sickness and disease demon in this room is about to leave. Yes, sir. Some of them have already been expelled. Yes, sir. Every angel in this room is about to unleash everything that he has been assigned to do. Praise God. It's here right now. One of the, uh, one of the, the gentlemen, I was just informed when we were in Washington and the glory of God moved in that meeting and you'll remember all the miracles. I'd seen that woman. You, you, you laid hands on a lady. Her, her body part, her leg grew completely out. The other lady took off the brace. And after 20 years of car accident, her foot was recreated. She took off running. You remember that? God was, and you were talking about receiving from the she warehouse the parts. I didn't know this, but one of the drivers that drove uh, me to the meeting that morning had seen, and you know him well, uh, he had seen in the spirit, the Lord opened his eyes while we were, while you and I and Miss Gloria and, and we were all commanding, operating a word of knowledge. He said, I saw angels come down through the roof, enter into the building and they were flying around. He said, they were, he said, the Lord, that's the first time that ever happened to him. He saw his, his eyes were opened and angels filled the auditorium and he said, each one was flying around and had something white, a white looking substance in his hand. And when when we would operate in word of knowledge and give that word, he said that angel would drop that thing. He'd, he'd see one of them just go over somebody's head and drop it. Praise God. 
Yes, sir. And he said that happened until the, until the service came to a conclusion and all the miracles happened. And he said, I watched them and they stayed there. And then he said, when that last word was given, we turned around. He said, the last one went right back through the roof. He, he's here to stay with us, Brother Cole. Praise yes, God. sir. Praise can I say one more thing here about this? And it's by, because I prayed through this this morning. Deuteronomy 28 is full of redemption from those curses. Yep. One of the curses is verse 40. You'll mm -hmm. have olive trees through all your coasts, but you won't anoint yourself with the oil. And, the, and your olive will cast its fruit. The issue is it is a curse for the healing anointing to be in this room. And one person, no, just one, leave without receiving what that healing anointing came Thank to give. You, Lord. I that. Thank you, Lord. Every person in this room will be impacted by the no more curse yes. anointing. Yes. It's not here for some, it's here for every person everybody. here. Everybody, everyone. Glory, Glory to God, everyone. 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 Thank you, Lord. Everyone. That's good. Everyone, like George. Praise we are standing and believing for Jeremiah 30, verse 17, from the Message Translation. As for you, I will come with healing, curing the incurable. We take that today in the name of Jesus. If you've been diagnosed with something that they said there is no cure for this, Jesus has come to cure the incurable. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Message? Message. Ooh, message. I like yeah. it. That's good. Cure the incurable. Thank you. Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, whose I am and whom I serve. We take authority over every sickness, every disease, every weakness, every pain, every grief, every sorrow. And we take authority over every demon spirit that's behind yes, sir. it. And we break your power. We cast you out. Get out of here, Satan. Get out of this room. Leave here. Take your head off God's property right this minute, right now. Go. Go. You take what Kelly said this morning. I'm free. I'm free, I'm free of this. Free. Ministering spirits, we loose you in this place. Move. According to the plan and according to the word of God. If you couldn't bend over, bend over. If you couldn't raise your arm, raise your arm. Hallelujah. Start moving. Start moving. Move your legs. You couldn't move them. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Cancer, I curse you. I curse you. Take your hands off right now. I break you loose in the name of the Lord Jesus. I curse you now. Lung disease, I curse you right now. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. We take it. The Lord said this to me last night, right, but right before I went to bed. <clears throat> the word of the Lord came to me. He said, I want to heal people in the morning of diabetes. Yes, 
And he gave me this instruction. If you have your equipment with you, check your blood, check your sugar. Cause when you check it again, we get done this morning, your sugar's gonna be back down to normal. Amen. And <laughs> so, yeah, thank you, Lord. For, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and uh, besides that, some of you are going to check it now and it's normal. I just heard the Lord say that. Praise God. Praise Amen. Amen. Glory. I curse you, diabetes, in the name of Jesus. Every class of it. Get out of this room, diabetes. Get out of here. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Wherever you are, wherever you're watching, run him out of the room. Stomp your foot and run him out of your house. No plague. No plague. No plague in your house. No plague in your house. You hear me? No plague in your house. until that moment I wasn't released to say this but I had been interceding for this meeting and I saw over into it and I saw a man that was on consistent dialysis because both of his kidneys had died due to diabetes and the Lord said I am going to recreate those kidneys in this meeting Amen. so when you charge that devil he left and when he left, Miss Gloria commanded that came up out of her spirit. He's not starting over. Those kidneys are born over. They're born over. A number of years ago, this, this, this goes back, uh, this goes back probably 40 years. And um, I, I had been called in to pray for this, uh, this person. And uh, I was standing there at the foot of the bed. And Lord, Lord, refresh the details of this in me so I get it right. Thank you, sir. And I didn't know the person. They, I, they just asked me to come. And uh, so uh, by the instruction of the Lord, I prayed. And, and, and I'm going through some of the, went through some of the things that we just got through doing. And then the, the person that was with me there said, now, this is the problem. And raised the sheet up from the foot of the bed and his foot was dead because of diabetes and he, he, he was, um, it, it had become gangrenous. He, 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 he's done for. He said, I said, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, in Jesus name and touched that and we just began to praise and worship God. And while we stood there and watched that, that foot went back to normal. Just, it just started moving right up his leg like that and was gone. Thank you. Thank you. While we were looking at it. That's here today. That's here today, right now. Every other kind of, every other kind of kidney disease, get out of the room. You are healed of that right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you. Brother Copeland, I'm just sitting here trembling under it while you're talking. The working of miracles is in the house. That anointing, it shows up anytime we believe for it, he'll accommodate us, but, but not like this. Th this is different. This is like the angel stirring the pool. Oh, this is like Lord. whoever gets in this thing is healed yeah. of whatever disease they have. The working of miracles was emanating from you. It nearly, it nearly fell over backward. The glory of God, the overflow of the working of miracles. I saw a person get hit at the base of their neck. The power go went down your spine and every degenerative area
area of bone and disease and vertebrae loss, bone loss was being restored. Osteoporosis and brittleness of bones and scoliosis and curvature of the back and all types of nervous disorders, pinched nerves, dead nerves. I saw nerves coming alive. I saw paralyzed body parts coming alive. I see a knee joint being replaced right now as we speak. Your right knee is being replaced to the glory of God. You need to do what you could not do to the, somebody's right ear just popped open. Somebody's right ear just popped open to the glory of God. Arthritis is leaving someone's right hand. And I heard a lady say during the week in my spirit, I saw it in the spirit. She said, you know, I don't know what I've done to my left arm. I just, I don't know what I've done to it. I don't know why it hurts. And, and uh, you're being healed right now in Jesus name. That's you. The Lord said you would know it was you when I said those words because you caught yourself and said, that's not faith. I didn't do anything to it. I'm healed. Well, you are healed right now in Jesus name someone's digestive tract actually part of your intestine has died Crohn's disease is being healed your intestines are being restored and there's someone with an ulcer so strong that the lining of your stomach needs to be recreated but it's being recreated as we speak when the Apostle Paul told Timothy for your often infirmities, there's someone in the digestive tract been plagued with this for multiple years. This is your moment. You're healed. All kinds of digestive tract disorders totally leaving the building. That's a demon, a spirit of infirmity. They are loosed. Loosed from their infirmity now. They need to check themselves. They'll, they'll be able to tell things right. are happening. Somebody's nasal passage just open wide open. Right. A recreation in your nasal passages. Hallelujah. Oh my goodness. Now I'm gonna do something that I that I saw in the spirit. I oh, saw geez. myself do this. Oh Jesus. Now you're gonna have to work with me. Don't run up to me. Just hold steady. I'm going to walk down that aisle. And at a point back there, I'm going to turn and come across that way. And then I'm going to walk back up this aisle. Now, as I do, you receive in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Receive your healing. Receive your healing. Be blessed. Receive it. Saga bufri bis non cretelco. De gro bufri ligo di gangangong dong jog zog. Zdeg zeg gis deg zog zeg gam gam prababodge. De ligo prabaka gangangandana. Davra dengen teke, clavro boste seke, teke atke anto, onte bongo do, ha ha le burro bum. The man, the man in the red, the man in the red shirt, yes sir, you, I just heard the word of the Lord. You're not only healed right now, but the situation that has brought so much grief to you is now over. It is done for. And he won't be back. Glory to God. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Glory. 
concentration of the power of God right up there in that section up there, all the way across over to in this area up there and right over in the, the, this part of this floor, it, the whole place is charged. It's supercharged with the power of God. So receive your healing, glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Praise Him, praise Him, praise Him. Rejoice and praise Him in the name of Jesus. Rejoice and praise Him. Rejoice and praise Him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Be blessed. Receive your healing. And someone right, right in this area has been delivered from a heroin addiction. Somebody right, somebody right up in there. Just rejoice and be glad. Glory to God. That thing is over. That thing is over. Well, glory to God. I just heard the word of the Lord right then. Everyone addicted to any form of chemical in this place, you are free now. You are free now. Right now. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. 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 God bless you and all your friends extended <laughs> Come on with me. Just walk with me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now lay your hand, lay your hand on that man right there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. This is wonderful, isn't it? Hallelujah. Isn't this wonderful? Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Put your hand on that man. Glory, glory. Come here, darling. Come here, darling. By his stripes, you are now made whole. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for it, Father. Whoa, glory, 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 glory. Amen. Praise God. This is wonderful, isn't it? <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Come on, walk with me. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yeah. You're going to live a whole lot longer than you thought you would. A whole lot longer than you thought you would. Things are happening in your body right now. Yeah, they are. have been for the last three days. Yeah. They're going to keep on doing it. My hearing, I can't hear. <laughs> Be loosed. In the name of Jesus. Awful. Hallelujah. 
Now I said, you're going to live a whole lot longer than you thought you would. Amen. That'll work. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. What's happening to you? Balance and vision. I need my sight back and my balance back. And God is good all the time. Amen. Uh, Thank you, I'll Lord. Just, just bless you and all these people here that's put this together. All your blended extended families, I give you a Father's blessing now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. I love Jesus. He's our Lord and Savior. <laughs> he is the way, and I've been listening to you a long, long time. You said 50 years. I said, how long? Come on. Balance. 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 Hallelujah. Let's make a turn. Amen. This, uh, this, this belongs to you. Is that right? <laughs> Jesus, Jan, and Pete. Amen. Okay, let me go. Let's take a walk. The contact of my hand transmitting the anointing into these eyes, affecting healing and good vision and perfect balance. In Jesus' name. I believe it. I receive it. I accept it. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. Thank you. What's your background? My background? Are you in the ministry? Sort of. Lay minister. Order, the Order of St. Luke the Physician. Yeah, Order of St. Luke the Physician. Since 2001. This time. God called me into this. This time next year, you will come back to this convention and you will testify that you are back doing more than you have ever done in your past to serve the kingdom of God. Thank you, Jesus. I declare it so in the name of I, Jesus. I believe it. I receive it. I right. it. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Every step, a step of faith. Praise God. Praise God. Woo, hallelujah. 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 Glory, 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 glory. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, glory, glory to God. May I say one thing because I know in my spirit it'll keep the switch of faith turned on for the people. 
When you raise your hands to that back session, I just saw it. I, all of a sudden, I just saw it. Teeth were being healed in, in all through that back section, all up in the balcony. And I saw someone's tooth dead at the root. I mean, it's like it's dead, but it's they drilled it out or something. They'll have a brand new tooth. It's growing back. It'll, it'll come back, back alive from the root of that tooth and the nerve ending. And I need to say that because they felt something come on them and they said, oh, no, uh, uh, that's just too, uh, well, I don't have to have that. No, no. Jesus is making us every whit whole. And they need to tell this ministry about it because it's the working of miracles. And I saw someone who had a tumor in behind your right eye. It's affected your vision, but it's not, it's not something that is so complete that it's gone, but it's affected you and, uh, and you've had to have treatment for it. That tumor dissolved when we walked through that area. Hallelujah. And I've got one more thing. When you spoke about heroin and then you said all addictions, the Lord gave me a verse for this meeting, and it was, it was uh, in Chronicles, 1 Chronicles 5, 20. And it says that the children of Israel got into battle with the Hagarites, the children of Hagar, the sons of Ishmael, the flesh. And they cried unto the Lord, and the Lord was entreated of them, and the Lord helped them, and the Lord delivered them. And the Lord said, everybody in that meeting today that is bound to their flesh, and their flesh is dominating them, and the children of the flesh, has seemed, it seems as if their body is dominating. Their spirit wants it. They've been trying to get it all week. But their flesh has got total control of them. He said, as they cry out to the Lord, the Lord is going to move in this place. And that's what that deliverance from addiction was about. He's going to move in this place and deliver them from the children of the Hagarites and help them win a great victory today. And their flesh is going under their spirit and they'll be free from this day forward forever. I totally agree. I totally agree. All right, uh, be seated. I just heard the Lord say it's time for somebody to come testify. Praise God. Amen. Kelly, you got some testimonies over there? Oh, come on. Glory, glory, glory. Amen. We got some super kid testimonies this morning. Amen. Listen, their theme this week has been glow. And they've got some stuff on the inside of them. I'm just praying y'all know what to do with these guys. They're going to come unglued on you. Hallelujah. It's changing things. Amen. This is Ricky. Ricky, come over here by me. Come stand right here in front of me. Ricky had a bump on his knee, and now it's gone. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. No bump? <laughs> yes. <laughs> no bump. Amen. Go right back there. This is Maya, and Maya, with the skin on her arms, got her proper coloring back. Tell me what happened. It was dark. I heard a hoop. I, kn I bet that was mama. Yeah. Yeah, mama. It was dark. Um, it was darker, and now it turned lighter, so it's like it's the same color as my skin. Amen. Hallelujah. Is this you? Timmy? This is Timmy, and she's been healed from asthma. Praise Hallelujah. God. Take a deep breath. Isn't that good? Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Love these smiles. Okay, now Ava, come here, Ava. Ava gets excited. I'm going to let her testify here in a second. But Ava had a corn on her foot. She said it was connected to her bone, but then it started glowing. Now, I want you to tell them what happened, okay? Right here. My, my bone started glowing everywhere around me. Um, I started to see a bright light in my heart, Jesus. I saw Jesus' whole body, even his head and his face, too. And um, I noticed, once I sat down in my seat, got, once I, because I finished getting prayed for in Super Kid Academy, and um, once I sat down in my seat, I'm like, what just happened? I feel different. Freaking out because my corn, um, the lines that were connected to the corn 
button that were connecting my the corn to my bones. Um, they're now gone. Bam! Off the corn. I said, "Can I feel like your foot?" And literally, there is nothing there. She showed me the little mark where there was something, but there is nothing there but a sweet, healthy, super kid foot. Amen? And she was glowing. Glowing. Hallelujah. That's awesome. Thank you. All right. Here is Kayla. Kayla Cook. Well, at Super Kids, my eye had been, like, blurry, like my left eye. And when Commander Jenny prayed for me, it, like, suddenly it got, like, so much less blurry. Like, Christ. so much less blurry. Christ. It was God. like, wow. Is it blurry now? A you. little tiny bit. Stretch your hands out towards her. Thank you, Lord. And which one? In the name of Praise Jesus, God. I command your eye to yes. be made whole yes. and for you to Heal. see whole. perfectly see and clearly. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Come on up here. Okay, this is Maylee, and her eyes were healed. Praise God. Hallelujah. Um, my eyes, I had a slight, well, first I got prayed for my eyes in Eagle Mountain, and then I had a lazy eye that was blurry, and it's been going on ever since I got my well, since I moved here, and now, now it is healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. This Praise is Kamari, God. and she was healed from ADHD. Praise God. What happened to you? Um, my, my parents have been, um, they've been helping me. Um, to like control it. But what happened when your hands were laid on you today? You said you were healed from ADHD. What happened when they laid hands on you today? Um, I just um, felt it go out of me. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> you know what? If you have children that have been diagnosed with ADHD, I want you to stand up right now. Stand up. Stand up. Or you, I guess you either. In the name of Jesus, I command every person who that has been spoken over you to be free. Jesus has made you free, made your children free in the name of Jesus. And every spirit and every biological, chemical thing connected with it is done and gone in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Say we're free. Amen. Hallelujah. This is Ryan, and Ryan's head had a lot of pain, and now it's what? It's gone. It's gone. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. You want to hear a few testimonies? Yes, I do. All right, let's do it. Here comes my sweetheart with a good-looking gentleman. Praise the Lord. Kathy, what's going on here? This gentleman is Thomas from England, and he has come for three years to volunteer in the meeting. And he was attacked last year with terrible pains and heart, shooting pains around his heart and so much pain in his body and he got weaker and weaker. He didn't think he could fly, but by faith he flew and he came. Monday he was prayed for in the volunteer meeting. He's been getting better every day and now totally pain free Ooh. and strong. Yeah. That is wonderful. Ladies and gentlemen, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word and the word of the testimony of Jesus, spirit of prophecy. This is these folks prophesying to you because there's no respect to persons what Jesus will do for you. 
Keep the switch of faith turned on. You're being healed while you're hearing them testify. Come down both sides, please, and we're going to get a stream of testimonies to what glorifies the King of Kings and what he's done in this house. Brother Kenneth and Brother Gloria, this is Milda from Mineola, Florida. She's been a partner since way back in 1987, but this is her first convention. She said in September, she had, in September 16th, she had a stroke, and a severe stroke, and it affected her walking. The doctor said she would never walk, talk, she's, and I can guarantee you after talking to her for the last 10 minutes, that's not true. And, and her, her eyes, she went to the eye doctor a couple weeks ago. They can see no evidence of the stroke whatsoever. She feasts on the daily broadcasts. She reads the word of God. She records the programs. And she said that Gloria's been her mentor. She's watched Healing School for decades. Praise. Hallelujah. We need to hear her talk. Let's glorify God a little. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm a miracle. I am a miracle. God is good. Amen. <laughs> we agree in Jesus' name. Glory be to God. Amen. Uh, brother and Sister Copeland, this is Dorothy Hunt from Montgomery, Alabama. Uh, she believes that she's been healed from digestive issues. She says that there were eight different diseases, uh, auto, 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 immune auto immune diseases, and she feels that she has been completely healed. And Wednesday she was prayed for, and she feels like her spirit has completely been lifted. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise Thank God. you. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Oh, praise God. Good, mor good morning, Brother Kenneth and Gloria. I want to let you know I have Cindy Carpenter here from Mason, Arizona. And Tracy, you called out a word of knowledge that there was a girl that had hurt her left wrist. Yeah. And she didn't know how she heard it. And then to herself, she said, this isn't faith. Well, today she received that word called out. She is totally healed and totally pain free. <laughs> Woo! Glory. Not a pain at all. Amen. <laughs> well, glory to God. Amen. Praise Hallelujah. God for his healing power. Do it again. <laughs> Amen. That's Amen. Wonderful. We, thank Glory God for the Holy Ghost. James, who do you have here? Uh, brother and Sister Copeland, this is Allison from DeKalb, Illinois. Two years ago, she had back surgery, but then since that time, always had continuous pain. Uh, last Friday, she finally went and got an MRI, but then she came here and has been believing God all week. For a miracle. They called her on Thursday and said actually what it was was a degenerative disc and she was going to need surgery, but she had already noticed a change in her body. And then today during service, God touched her. She tells me that she's completely healed. Hey, praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. I worked with the evangelism team all this week. And before I came, I couldn't walk, sit, or stand for more than 20 minutes. And I still came, and Riley and people on the team were my number two for a miracle. And when Tracy said, your back is all straightened out, the degenerated disc, that was me. Why don't you show, why don't you show us that what you can do? Hallelujah. 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 Praise, Praise the Lord. God. That's so good. <laughs> oh, the healer's in the house. Oh, oh healer is in yeah. there. Brother Kenneth and Sister Gloria, we have Keela here from Keller, Texas. And she, what she has uh, been having, her right ear has been muffled since she was nine years old. She's 20 right now. And Brother Kenneth, she said that as you were talking about Psalms 91, an ear came, some kind of ear, sound like ocean ear, came through her right ear. And now she can hear plain and clear. <laughs> Yeah. Brother and Sister Copeland, this is George from Little Rock, Arkansas. He has not been able to sleep, and he has to have a water bottle beside his bed because he's got sinuses problems. And so he said that when Brother Copeland spoke just a little while ago, his sinuses opened up, and oh. now he's, he's healed. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Oh. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Thanks, guys. Praise God. Amen. Praise Praise what do we have here, Pastor? 
Brother and Sister Copeland, we have Ruth from Michigan, and she said she was diagnosed with ostopenia about three years ago, which causes severe pain when she sits for long periods of time. Said she got to try that out in the convention. Yeah. So but she said she just noticed today that there's been no pain in her body sitting in these long services, and she wanted right. to testify. Praise the Lord. Yeah, it's really, it was such a blessing because when I sit for a long time getting up, is, you know, you can feel the, the discomfort and everything. So uh, I realized this morning I've been getting up and down and sitting without any issues at all. Isn't that wonderful? So, praise, praise God. God. Amen. Thank, Thank, you, Jesus. Praise Thank, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. A lot of people. They're going to figure out in the next few days, something, something's working right here. <laughs> yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So expect it. Amen. <laughs> Kathy? Ken and Gloria, this is Gary from Oklahoma City, and he has, he's been suffering from diabetes, and he's been on dialysis three days a week. Oh, so he just grabbed that word Hallelujah. that you gave, Amen. Amen. <laughs> and he couldn't, he, he couldn't stand up well or stand up for very long. Hallelujah. And Gloria, when you said do something you couldn't do, he stood up and he's been standing ever since. Wow. <laughs> he feels great. Hallelujah. 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 He called that kidneys. I saw two kidneys this morning for me. Hallelujah. I said, that's going to be mine. Amen. So I came here this morning with my wife. I couldn't even walk across the street. I made it over here. I'm here. Amen. Hallelujah. Wonderful people. Hallelujah. I've been, I've been a, a, a prayer partner with y'all for 20 years. Thank I've been going through stuff for 20 years, but God has healed me. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I love y'all. Love yeah, we you. love you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, hang on one second. Praise. Brother Copeland, this is the man I saw in the spirit. I could have described him to you. Could we get our hands on him for those Absolutely. kidneys? Praise. I saw, I could have described him to you. I could have described you. I saw you in the spirit. It's done. Hey, have your kidneys. One, two, three. Now. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Kenneth and Gloria, this is Pierre from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. He's been a partner for about 10 years. Um, this last year, the doctors diagnosed him with type 2 diabetes and tried to put him on pills. And he, he's been a believer for a long time, and he just refused to take the pills. He wasn't going to take the medicine. And in the process, of course, he's had high blood pressure. They tried to put him on medicine for that. But today, he's already received, he says, he's received his healing in his eyes. He hasn't been able to read without the glasses on the top of Hallelujah. his head. But now, he has no problem reading the scripture right here, right now, already. Hallelujah. You know you're going to have to read us a verse, don't you? Uh, hallelujah. Read us something. Now there is hope in thine end. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Go ahead and read that scripture because of prophecy. When you read it, when, listen, I see the scripture he's reading. When he reads it to you, you take it. It's about to happen to families all over this place. Read, read from the top. 
Yes, Lord. Let me bless me, bless me, bless me, Lord, to settle. And there is, uh, is hope in thy end, said the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. That thy children, hallelujah. My God, my children, oh my God, my children shall come oh, again to the. My, Wait, 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 wait. To their own border, he bringing them, bringing back my children into the fold that they will be in church yes. with me. Yes. Glory, yes. hallelujah! Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. I came here to see you, Brother George. The Lord told me after a couple of years, my wife and I spoke to you almost 10 years ago. And we were starting a church. She died. This year will be five years. The Lord say, I didn't take away what I called you to do. And you told me was to contact you. And I'm here. I'm going to be at Eagle Church, Mongan Church tomorrow because I need to see you. Amen. Because that church has started and God called me to do a job and you are going to guide me to do it. <laughs> and that's why I'm here. That's why I'm here. Hallelujah. I'm not accidentally here, I'm here. You told me to see you. Now I'm seeing you because I'm going to finish the work at 62. I can touch my toes because four years ago, you prayed, I was at home in front of the TV. And at 62, I can touch my toes without bending my knees. Glory to God. And God bless me, but I'm going to do the work God called me to do. Amen. And I'm going to see you. And you're going to be my instructor <laughs> and my teacher. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Praise you. Glory to God. Uh, Brother Sister Copeland, this is Lily Durden from Houston, Texas. She's been tormented very much. She's a, a recent widow, and she screamed out last night, and the prayer team got around and prayed with her last night, and she just wanted to let you know that she'd been relieved of oh, that pain. Bless your heart. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Yes. Please. Uh, yes, actually, I was the lady that was up in the um, in the very top last night that screamed out during yeah. Pastor Robinson's yeah. uh, ministry of the word and I was free because I had been tormented uh, for about 16 months a lot of fear anger anxiety um, uh, my husband died of sudden uh, of leukemia and um, it, it was just I lost everything, and so when I came here, even though last night was my first night, I do know that it doesn't have to be a whole week to receive your blessings or deliverance. Yeah. It can be one night, one Amen. minute, one second, because God is everywhere and He's always there. And so I just, um, just wanted to say, I just uh, think it was one lady in particular that actually sit with me the whole time. Her name is Susan. Susan, if are you in here? Uh, one of her, her husband, I think, uh, works with you all as a volunteer. Mm -hmm. And then the, uh, one of the security guards of course, uh, sat with me and prayed with me. And, and the, uh, the team just kind of rallied around me. Praise so it was God. wonderful. We Praise love you so much. Thank you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, yeah. Thank, you. Thank you, Jesus. Brother Kenneth and Sister Gloria, I have Linda here, and she's been a partner of your ministry since 1984, and she's a member of Eagle Mountain International. And I don't know if you guys remember, but she was the lady when Cruffalo Dollar was up here and said, bring me a stick, and she brought her stick up. And I want you to know she said she was on that stick because she had done something to her lower back that ran all the way down to the, her ankle of, of her right leg, and she couldn't even squat. But after she brought her stick up and she left, look at what she could do. She couldn't even sit down in a chair. Now she can squat without a pillow. 
Now she can squat and she says multiple other things are going on in her body that are improving right now. Praise God. Oh, thank, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank Done. you, Lord Jesus. Glory. Brother, and sister, Glory. Brother and Sister Copeland, this is Ian from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, he tells me he's had digestive problems, serious problems for three years, including a rare disease um, and continuous pain. When he came this morning, he was hurting. And Tracy had a word for someone with digestive problems, mm -hmm. and God touched him, and pain's gone. Praise, Praise God. God. Praise God. God. That's awesome. Good job. Yes, praise God. Praise God. Glory. We have David from Lawrence, Kansas, and last year, last July, David said that he was diagnosed with grade four colon cancer. He called Kenneth Copeland Ministries for prayer. They prayed for him, and he just wants you to know today, Brother Kenneth, Sister Gloria, that he got his doctor's report, and he now has absolutely no trace of cancer in his body. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Praise, Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, Thank you, Lord for your mercy to all. Isn't that a wonderful? Praise God. I'm so glad. I'm so glad also that I can be in this condition today. With your help and others' help, a doctor said to me after checking me out at the end of the situation, after about a month's time, he said, I'm glad I could help you. And my wife, Joanna, said, no, it was Kenneth Copeland that helped her. He, he, write, he didn't say no, no, no. He said, yes, it is truly the faith that brings you here. Jesus. Praise. To your present condition. Praise God. Oh, Father. Thank you, Lord. Oh, you, Lord. the Lord Jesus. He's the helper. <laughs> the Holy Spirit, is, had, wasn't he sent to be our yes. helper? Yes. Praise God. Amen. I am so pleased, sir. Amen. Praise Let's give the Lord another praise for that. That, that is so Thank wonderful. You. Thank you, Lord. That is so Thank wonderful. Thank you, Lord. Brother and Sister Copeland, this is Debbie from Austin, Texas. She said that she has been diagnosed with degeneration in her spine, and she has been speaking to it. Yeah. When Brother Copeland spoke over it, she received it. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Thank Amen. And you, you had a testimony about your son. Tell that God. briefly. What's going on with him? I'm, I'm standing in faith that Bo is delivered from the, the depression and suicidal thoughts. Amen. I know Amen. that he is. I know that he is. Amen. Amen. Yes. Oh, yeah. We're standing Amen. and agreeing with you. He'll live and not die, and yes. he's free. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Brother Sister Copeland, this is Sheila from Channel View, Texas. This is her first Believer's Convention. She had been suffering with arthritis in the knees, very painful even to walk. And uh, Tuesday she received some things when Dr. Dollar was preaching, and she was going out, and the pain started hitting her again, she said. And said the Lord said to her, said, no, as they healed, as they went, they were healed. And she said, I'm going to take that. And she noticed today that the pain's gone, she said, and she wants to show you something. She's a runner today. Amen. <laughs> Without pain. <Yeah. laughs> Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Ken and Gloria, this is Leslie from Trinidad, Texas. And three years ago, a wall fell on her leg oh, and, and her back. And her knee especially has been just awful ever since. And the Lord told her, this is her first year to be here, because the Lord said, go to the convention and you'll be healed. <laughs> so this morning, tell what happened this morning. Well, I want to tell you, a week and a half ago, I was, I'd wake up in the night, the Holy Spirit would wake me up, and I'd start hearing songs of praise, and wake up singing, and I'd go back to sleep just thanking God, you know, that He had me in His hands, and He put on my heart, you have to go, you've got to get to the Believer's Convention, you've got to go, you'll be healed, and I came, and, and I've just stood in just praise and all the wonderful things that God has been doing for everyone. He's so gracious. Yes, and um, when you walk back and you begin to pray and talk over people and you mentioned about the spine, 
My spine was crushed, both legs, my foot was broken, and they told me that for the rest of my life I would live with sciatic pain and I would continue to have, have surgeries and there wasn't much hope for my left knee but to have it replaced, I don't have to. My knee, I feel it tingling going down my spine, the sciatic nerve, and my knee is whole. It feels whole for the first time. It was like a fire. Yes. Thank you. I don't want to bend down because my idea, but I can raise it. I couldn't bend the knee at all. Glory it's to God. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, praise God. Give the Lord praise. Thank you, Hallelujah. Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Not starting over, born over. Glory. Kenneth and Gloria, this is Chosen Washington, my new favorite name, Chosen Washington, from Sugarland, Texas. She's been a, uh, a partner with the ministry since 1997, and she talked about she received healing for three things today, all words of knowledge that came forth. First, her right knee has been swollen. She's had soreness, pain. She hasn't been able to move. The word of knowledge came forth for her right knee today. She has complete freedom, no pain, Praise no God. swelling. Oh, she can run around the building if we want her to. <laughs> <laughs> also, her digestive system, she's been having swelling in her stomach. Word of knowledge came forth for that. Wow. The swelling has yes. already gone down. And then Tracy talked about a tooth growing out from the root. And this is her. She received wow. it into oh, yeah. her I came to Believers Group, um, the meeting last year, and a word of knowledge came from Brother Copeland, and they began to declare that God was cr doing creative uh, healings in the house, and he was replacing teeth. And I grabbed a hold to it, but at that time, I, I, didn't, I needed to go back and continue to just stand on the word of God, and I stood on the word of God, and I came when I told my husband, I said, you know what, this year, I am not leaving. 2016, I am not leaving here without my teeth. And as you begin to walk around, you said, just reach out and receive it. One word you said, Brother Copeland, was you say, stop trying to receive, get healing. Just receive it. I received that. I said, okay, Lord, I'm just going to receive it. I'm not fighting for this. It's mine. I'm a covenant woman. I received my teeth in the name of Jesus. As you were walking around and you passed by and you came through here, and as you passed by, the thought just came. It's like, Lord, this is the last, this is 2016. I want my teeth. I believe I received my teeth in the name of Jesus. And then you got up and you said, the Lord gave me a word. He just, I just seen it. Uh, someone that had a tooth that looks like uh, a root canal had taken place and is, is uh, infected or whatever. And God is replacing your tooth right now. That's me. I received my teeth in the name of Jesus. It's already done. And when I come back, I'll be smiling and I'll testify it all over the world because Jesus is a healer yeah. in the name of Jesus. I give him glory and praise for it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for my teeth. Thank you. Thank you for Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, Brother Copeland, Sister Gloria, this is Henrietta Thompson. She's from Dallas, North Dallas, Texas. Uh, her left shoulder, she had a lot of soreness and stiffness in it. And she's also had numbness in her feet. But she says, no more dialysis, no more diabetes, excuse me, and no more hypertension, and the pain is completely gone. Thank you, Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. That is so Hallelujah. Well, Brother Kenneth and Sister Glory, I have today with me Darnell Price from Greensville, South Carolina. And she came today believing God all this week to have her eyes restored, healing in her eyes. She said she was sitting next to a neighbor that had a Bible with the teeniest little print. And she said, I'm going to be able to read that print in that Bible. And she stood on the scripture about Moses living to be 120 and his eyes were not dim. And she said today, she said, lady, let me see that Bible. Amen. And when she took the Bible, she can make out some of the words. She says it's getting clearer, but she's so ecstatic because she's never been able to reprint that small before. Well, Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Hey, what do you have here? Amen. Brother and Sister Copeland, this is Edmund and Christine. Um, Edmund has had three years of serious knee pain and then 50 years of neck pain. He went to EMIC this past Sunday, got prayed for. 
all week, been better and better. Used to be only be able to walk for no more than five minutes. Now he's been walking all Praise over at the convention, God. doing just great. Hallelujah. Praise God, God, brother. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory. We have Sharon from Illinois. Sharon said that she hurt her neck in the military about 20 years ago, and she's been experiencing neck and back pain. And today, Brother Kenneth, while you were talking about angels, she said all the pain immediately left her body. She is now totally pain-free in the name of Jesus. Glory, Glory to God. Glory. Hallelujah. Brother and Sister Copeland, this is Valerie from Houston, Texas. This is her first year here. But she's been, she, has, she said she has been homeless on and off for the past five years. She said she has been delivered from diabetes, and she has been diagnosed with several other things, but she's believing for total restoration. Yes. Amen. 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 We agree with you, yes. darling. Show Hallelujah. Where it is. What to do. Stay Glory right there. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for helping me. Both, both you tormenting spirits, both of you, stop it. Get out of this house right now. You leave God's property alone. Let her alone. Praise God. Now, from this day forward, things are going to begin to clear up. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yeah, hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Thank you, Lord. Glory, 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 glory. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, there's five people hearing from the Lord right now to come bring her some money. I'm We're not putting one. up with this homeless stuff anymore. Amen. You're right. Amen. And EMIC is going to, going to help her and, and help arrange things and help her. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Give the Lord some praise here. Give the Lord some praise here. So God that he did the umbra but get the other that's a secret. That will have a different palanine. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, they're the most wonderful people on earth. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Okay, let's let's go ahead. 
Praise the Lord, Brother Copeland, Sister Copeland. I'm excited this morning to be standing by Chester and Pam. Chester and Pam pastor a church in Utah. He's a church planter. But he's had MS for over 17 years, hasn't been able to walk. His wheelchair is back down the aisle where y'all walked by a little while ago. And as you prayed this morning, the Lord just told him to get up. He got up, and he wanted to share his testimony when the power of God came on him like that. And he said, but I need to go to the restroom first. And his wife said he actually ran to the restroom, and he's been standing here a long time. I want him to demonstrate how he can walk this morning. Yeah, let's do that. Glory, hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Absolutely wonderful. Glory. Absolutely wonderful. Kenneth and Gloria, this is a precious lady, Cheryl from here in Dallas. And she... I don't know what this little lady was doing on a tractor lawnmower, but she was driving it and drove it into a ditch. And then she tried to pull it out herself with her bare hands. <laughs> so tell us what happened. Well, my sister was pushing and I was pulling and I hit the ground on my bottom. And when I did, oh, it hurt my low back and I could just see the compression of my disc. I'm an imaging technologist, so I know what it looks like. And I sat there for just a brief second, and then this anger rose up in me, and I thought, I am not going to be a slave to back pain. I know what that does to people. My sister comes over, and she's real compassionate, and she said, do you want a heating pad? I said, no, I'm healed in the name of Jesus. I got up off the ground. I sat in the tractor. We got it out of the ditch so I could drive it. I got in the tractor. I sat there, and I drove it into the garage. I walked out of my house, and I just started professing and claiming, and I said, God, I, you've healed me. You did it years ago. Before I was born, I just kept going on and on. And I, I've been doing it all week. And I knew when I got here, it was going to be completed. I guess God just put that in my heart. And it's going to be completed when you get there. And it's just, in, and all, since that happened, you're going to have to shut me up. <laughs> since that happened, I just, it's reinforced to me. This is about the fourth time God's healed me with something physical over the last two or three years. You know, dumb little things you put up with. He's just reminding me, okay, I'll do that for you. There's other things in your life I'll heal you of too. You know, just stuff from the past or whatever. And I just want to tell everybody, take authority when it happens. Don't let it sit. When you let it sit and fester, it just gets worse and worse. And then the devil has a chance That's to just work. infiltrate your mind. And good I'm work. so glad because of so many of the stories you told us about how you walk through those healing, especially with your leg. That testimony has just ministered to me over and over. And I, I appreciate, I can't tell you the value I place on the teachings that you've given us as partners. I value every one of them. I listen to them all the time. Amen. And that's why I could do what I did that day. Amen. Thank you yeah. so much. Yeah. Hallelujah. God. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, thank God. Uh, Kenneth and Gloria. This is Mardina from San Francisco. She's been a partner with the ministry for, uh, since about 2000. She lived in Arlington until about five years ago when she moved to San Francisco. When she moved, she developed severe sinus problems, allergies, sinusitis, whatever, but there was a problem. The doctors gave her sinus solutions, but she's been having trouble. Today, during the, uh, during the service, she received her healing, and she started to breathe in and out. At first, it didn't come, but she just kept breathing. She kept working it and working it, and she kept breathing, and now she's completely clear and can breathe perfectly, Hallelujah. and she's oh, healed. Oh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Sure, Hallelujah. sister. Thank you, Lord. Yes, I, th I truly thank God for my healing. I've been struggling with this for months and months and months. I've been taking sinus pills, this, that pill. And the last time I went to the doctor, she told me to try this natural solu saline solution. I tried that. It worked for a little while. Um, but it just, it's still just no, no remedy. But I've been believing God, standing on the yeah. word, but not just as faithful as I should have been. And when he had the word of knowledge about the sinuses, I told the Lord, I said, Lord, I want to be able to breathe. I want to be able to breathe freely. The Lord says, just begin to breathe in my healing, begin to take it in and begin to eat the fruit of, of your healing. I said, Lord, I receive it and I take it. And I just begin to just by faith, I took it in and now I'm, I can totally breathe free. I thank God for that. Now show us, show us, show us, show us. <sighs> no, no. <laughs> That's wonderful. Glory Woo, to thank God. you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, Brother Kenneth, Sister Gloria, this is Nathan Gasford. He and his wife, Lacey, 
uh, from Alva, Oklahoma, and this is their first trip here. They were really believing God for the finances to get here. He said it was tough, but he knew he, sh he was supposed to be here. He was born in 1980 with a, with a, a defective kidney. And in 1990, his mom donated a kidney. And now the doctors are telling him that that kidney is failing. But he heard what you said about new kidneys. And he also heard what Tracy said about new kidneys. And he's said that he is healed and he's receiving new kidneys today. Yes, 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 yes. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Let's um, call him back. Call him yeah, back yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. Call him back up. Sir. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. This is this. This is connected to something that happened a long time ago. The Lord didn't show me what it what it is. But at this moment in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by his blood, you are totally and completely separated from that. Now, Tracy. Yeah. In the kisti, ishi, ili, kisti, ishti. Oh, my God, I'm brown and beat them. New kidney. New kidney. New kidney. <laughs> right fresh out of the box. Glory <laughs> to God. Hallelujah. Brother Copeland, Woo. something, two, two things here that are so obvious, uh, we can't miss it. One is when the Bible speaks of gifts of healings, there can be a stream in one area that just him that has more should be given. That's right. There's no reason for anybody in here with any internal disorder of any organ, but especially kidneys, to leave here without perfect function in their kidneys. Right, right now, just breathe right that in. Now. But the second thing, and uh, this is uh, something that I wish Miss Billy was here because of the Hebrew base. But you are a student of the Old Testament, and you know this well, and you know more about this than I do. But as I've studied the Chumash and other things, mm -hmm. the Hebrews believed. Somehow when they talked about the belly, out of your belly, good mm -hmm. comes out of your belly. And we talk about it coming out of the heart of man. They believed the kidneys were the seat of life. And, and so when, you, when they were blessed in their inward parts, they were, they were particularly talking about the kidneys. Now, there's, I, I believe the Lord is saying to my spirit... It's more than just organs he's talking about here. He's talking about the life of God mm -hmm. as it comes into our being in the belly and disseminates to every fiber of our being. He is, it's a life force and source. That's, that, what's, happening. that's what's happening to diabetics. That's exactly what I was trying to say. Yeah, that's what's happening. Right. And, and <clears throat> I, I've heard it a couple of times now in just the last 10 minutes or so. Uh, it's time to go ahead and check your blood sugar. It's time to go ahead and check it. Amen. Because there's somebody in here, the blood sugar is normal. And I want to know about it. Praise God. Amen. Go ahead, darling. Brother Kenneth and Sister Gloria, I have today with me Stephen from San Antonio, Texas. And he came up to share with me that in 2012, he was diagnosed with bipolar type 2 disorder, has documented um, medical records to show that he truly had an imbalance in his hormones. And he said in 2015, he grabbed a hold of the words you teach from this ministry about taking your authority and dominion and using the word of faith to receive your healing. And he rebuked this this 
spirit of bipolar disorder. He not only had that spirit that he rebuked, but at that time that he rebuked it, he received total manifestation in 2015. He's been drug free um, from, from the, the drugs that he needed to take for this disease. Since 2015, it's been one year he's been set free. And then he went on to share with me that he used to be hooked on drugs. And at the same time that he rebuked that disease, he totally got free from all drug usage. Praise, Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. That's good, man. Oh, that's on top. Praise you are the God. first fruits today of the testimony of all these deliverances in the house. Yes, Congratulations on your freedom. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Brother and Sister Copeland, this is Marcia from Albright, Pennsylvania. She said she is a gospel singer and has been attacked by the enemy with sinuses and even her, her throat was closed and she couldn't sing anymore. And then Brother George was on TV one day and he had a word of knowledge for sinuses and uh, congestion of the throat and the lungs and all that stuff. And she received it and then she was able to sing again. And she is so grateful for this ministry. And today she is delivered from tormenting spirits also. Praise. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. You know, when you said Abraham and you all the families of the earth to be blessed, the young man just gave this testimony. He's about to tell us, I think there's a connection here. This is Stephen's mom, Barbara, from San Antonio. She also, three years ago, uh, Barbara said that she was clinically diagnosed with clinical anxiety and depression, had suicide thoughts, but Jesus freed her also. Praise God. Glory to God. She's, Barbara said she's one of the happiest persons on the planet now, <laughs> Brother Sister Copeland. <laughs> Amen. So the, de the devil tried to destroy the a family, but Jesus has delivered a family. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. That is so wonderful. Let's now, just now. stand up and give the Lord praise and glory over here this morning. I want to hear about that blood sugar. Is that you? Praise God. Come stand right here. I've been uh, diagnosed. I've been diagnosed with diabetes for about 15, 17 years. And uh, he told me to take my blood sugar. And then when I did, it was normal. It was 85. I hadn't been that for, I don't know 85. how long. It was 85. And then he told me to take it again. And it came down to 72. Oh. So praise the Lord. We bless him today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then I want to add that. Satan tried to tell me he's not talking to you. He can't heal you. He can heal everybody else, but he can't heal you. But I can tell you, Satan, you are a liar yes, and the is. father of it. <laughs> Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord God. Oh. Yeah, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> now, hey. Everybody in the house, raise, raise your hand up toward the Lord. Just in case we missed anybody. Pray this, oh God in heaven. I believe with all my heart. Jesus has been raised from the dead. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Take my life and do something with it. I repent of sin. I, re I repent of the past. I renounce the devil and everything he stands for. Fill me right now, please. With your, With your precious Holy Spirit, I receive, I receive. And, I and I fully expect to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gives me utterance. And I thank you for healing my body. 
I thank you for healing my finances. I thank you for healing my family. I just thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Now give him praise and honor and glory. 